plate is off. I'll pull you out a bit just so you get a bit more of a, a view. So the plate is off and three of the bolts that actually hold this cassette gearbox in place have uh, been removed. Two of them are longer, one is shorter and um, it's this one that's the shorter one. So move that for splash guard plate, whatever, dam, um, baffle, whatever you want to call it. Now the engine is getting lighter and lighter every time I take something off it. Oh, bloody hell. These are quite tight for good reason. So, as far as I understand, as far as my little brain tells me, that this should just slot out. I don't think it's going to be that easy. Ah! Right, we've got a lot of gunk at the bottom here. And this is oil. You see that? The middle tail focus. There. This is oil and water contamination. It makes this horrible mud gross stuff. And that's what that is. So there's been a bit of water in here. Yucky down. So, with any luck, oh, you little beaut, I don't know what that noise is. I hope it's nothing serious. So, it's come out a bit, and it seems to have got stuck. Get all this crap off my fingers. All this. All this dark tan of the casing is overheated oil. I might have seen something here. Let's check the other side. Make sure I'm not being completely stupid. So that shaft wants to go through there. Ah, the selector drum. Yeah, my mug. I don't know if you can see that down here at this selector drum it's wanting to pull out but it can't because it's bolted in. Something about me and selector drums, I always seem to forget. <laughs> I'm trying to pull out gearboxes that are there. The output shaft is wanting to go and it's actually pulled through quite a bit. It's a selector drum that's open. It's not been stupid, it's my fault. It's come out as far as it can and then the uh, selector fork dogs don't want to come out any further, obviously. So that's that little plate. With these pins on, like standoffs. Detent arm. Oh, see, you push the dog and out she comes. What's that there? Something's fallen out. We'll get that on the other side. So we soaked up what was left of the oil. Not much, which is good. So we'll tip her back up. Like so, can you see? Can you see? Yes, we can see. And hopefully exploded on me. And that with this annoying input shaft what is a block of wood. Oh wonderful. Look at that block of wood, that block of wood's perfect. Well this is crazy. It's like sort of massive. Long gear. There. 
another gear. Ooh, we've got spacers. Look at that, lovely blue. <laughs> they didn't start. I don't think they started life out blue. No, probably not. Oh yeah, maybe. God, this is the old school way of making gearboxes. These eccentric, the old, old way of making. Um, it's not that old, obviously. But uh, they don't make them like this anymore. They forge them, they don't do this. Ah, the selector shaft. There we are. I was going to say, we've got one missing. So that goes in yon end. Lift up, rod in. It's nicely well, it's well oiled, which is nice. Thrust washer there. Is that another washer? That is another washer. Oh, there's, a cup. there's a cup in there. We'll deal with that in a minute. So I think these blue discs are spacers. So that's a freewheeler. But I think here. Do we have a spacer? Yeah, you can see by the impression. So we have a spacer that goes on there, like so, and I'm guessing we have another spacer that goes there, like so, and then that rides on the top of there. Yeah, you can see the wear pattern here of where that spacer used to live. And then this gear, with its dogs facing the dogs on this side, goes on top of there. And then we have the thrust washer that went there. Is that right? Input shaft, input shaft. No washer there. Oh yes, there is a washer there. It fell through. This is a big, hefty, thick washer that goes on that side. And booyah! Look at that. That's that's amazing. Now that is how all gearboxes should be made. It's got a deflection plate there. That is beautiful. That is a thing of beauty. Look at that. It's your gearbox all out, all done, all told. That is beautiful. I'm just going to keep that like that forever. Clean it up and just keep it on my mantelpiece. <laughs> anyway, so this is the weird, the weird, weird, weird arrangement of this engine. And it is weird. Really weird. Scarily weird. Right, I'll admire this for a five or ten minutes, go and get a coffee and then we'll uh, we'll be back and we'll carry on with the rest of the disassembly. Right, so take this hardwood pump gear off. Ooh. The bolt's got stuck in. Take that off. It's a DID chain. It's a DID chain. Little tiny one. Cool. Some little chain in there is your oil pump. Well, we will open that. Not right now, but we will open that later on to have a look. So you can see it's probably an eccentric um, oil pump. They sound a bit brittle, but not coming off. So we've got a return valve here, if I'm not talking shite, by the look of it. So if the oil pressure is too much, is too great in the main gallery, that opens this relief valve here and lets oil drain through these holes back into the crank casing. So that one's that one, that one's that one. This whole thing should now come out like so. So this is our um, pickup tube. So it's got a hood and a pickup tube, and then the oil pump lives in here, which is driven off that chain sprocket which you've just seen. Yeah, this is a pressure release valve. So as it comes out of the oil pump, if the pressure's too high, this the spring inside is depressed. These ports. All four ports open up and let oil drain back into the sump to stop the engine 
from exploding because of too high pressure. High pressure can be caused by blockages, etc. etc. Um, so that helps it, that stops it damaging the system. Right then. You may be thinking, ah, you've been a dickhead. You forgot. You forgot to undo this nut while the clutch was in place, etc. But if this nut wasn't tight, I wouldn't be able to get the rods off, and I've got a way to get this nut off, so I haven't been that stupid. So it's rod and piston time in a minute, which is going to be quite cool. There's a dowel here, and the bolt just screws inside, and that's the longer one of the three. The other three, I think, well, I noticed that that one was the longer one. The other three, I think, are the same size. We'll put that bolt and washer back on the oil pump, put the oil pump to one side. And now, we're pretty much left with nothing. <laughs> um, camshafts and the crankshaft. So, and the pistons and the rods, etc. Obviously. So, one thing you might have noticed is how the hell do you get the rods out? How the hell do you get the pistons and the rods out? Because it's all built in. Well, I don't know why I just turned it over because I wanted to show you. So, if you take the whole engine over, what's that rest in the crank? <coughs> you can see, there's a, can you see that? Yeah, you can see there's a hole. A gigantic hole. That's the crankshaft, there are the rods, and it's the same this side, which is how you disconnect the rods which is a massive bitch but it needs doing so if we get the rods out and you can't pull the crank out I think so you can't pull that casing off because I think that casing on the other side is pressed onto the crankshaft and if you try and pull the crankshaft out the pistons and the rods are connected so you ain't going anywhere, so that's why we had no luck. So in the bottom of the gearbox there's a lot of this debris crap that we found earlier. So we'll get to mop that up. Now a lot of people might be thinking, God this would have been so much easier, and I agree with you, um, if I'd have cleaned the engine, the outside of the engine, first, before opening it up because it stops all the crap on the outside of the engine going on the inside. Yes, I totally agree. No, I didn't forget. I just wanted to start with an engine that a lot of people might start with. An unknown engine. I didn't want to wipe away any of the the dirt and marks and all the rest of it because that might give me a clue to overheating etc. Maybe problems and um, not only that is this is getting every single bearing, o-ring, washer, gasket, everything taken out, all the studs taken out, all the dowels taken out, and it's going to get blitzed. So that doesn't really, you know, the shit getting on the inside doesn't really matter because it's going to get blitzed. These three bolts are out of here. That is the selective box. I need to put that back as well. Just put these back with the live. It's always a good thing to do. I'm alright here because um, not only do I do engines quite a lot, but that's 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 no safe haven whatsoever. Um, I've got video. This video I'm taking, I can look back at if I've forgotten where something goes or how it looked before I took it apart and exactly how I took it apart, etc. Um, I don't think it looks pretty simple, it's it obviously goes there, but you come back to it two weeks later and you have completely forgotten that thing you thought you'd never forget. Right then, rod time. So, the best way I can see of doing the rods 
is to flip the engine this way so I can see the bottom of the crank but I also need access to the crank so I can turn it and I don't know whether you can see there Let me zoom out a bit um, is that better? That's probably better. No, that's better. Move it this way a bit. There we go. Right then. So yes, I need to be able to move the clutch in there. Be able to rotate the engine and be able to get to the rods. So there. I can see the uh, right hand rod. What size is that? Is that going to be a 14? Oops, oh, a 12. So I should, with any luck, be able to get in on that rod. Room to work in here as soon as you break it. So, unlike two strokes, these rods are split rods, and you'll see what I mean. But the big end of the rod is split into two, and these are nuts on the ends, not bolts. There's one nut. That's actually not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. I think there's more room in the other side because that's where the gearbox goes. I'm just winging this nut off with my fingers. There we go. Getting the caps out, that's going to be a bit more difficult, but I can get a, something there to give it a little bit of a whack. Because you usually have to whack caps off. They're not really he man it, but you have to give it a at least a bit of a tap. Um, unless I turn in the crank. No, I won't be that lucky. I thought I might leave the rod behind. No, unfortunately not. Oh no, there we go. That's popped a cap. So if you're lucky, what happens is is as the piston goes to top dead centre, the crank then keeps on rotating and kind of pops the rod cap off. So that noise you can hear is the rod cap. Oh, come on, you sod. And get the screwdriver and very, very gingerly. against the rod ever so slightly. Give it a couple more rotations and hopefully it will release our rod. Now this would be easy. Easy, easy. And if you have got a friend with you, I recommend that you don't have the friend turn the crank and you have your hands in here because they might misinterpret what you say and this will chop your hand off. No problem. It is like a Elga's out of pain in there. Tell you what, releasing the other rod might help us because the rods are rubbing against each other, so I should be able to ah, get the rod split there as well. Get this rod from this side without turning the engine upside down. There we go. Whoa. Like I say now, oh, we're leaking oil. 
now the engine wears nothing. Which is a problem. <laughs> Steel instead of steel and aluminium. There's a problem with steel on aluminium threads is that they, like you see with the covers, it's tight, tight, and then it slips and you end up taking half your knuckles out. So I will be getting new nuts for these rods, and new bearings, maybe even new rods, we'll see.